This is the Mercator projection. Hated by a lot of people due to some imperfections possible to find in it, it is though one of the most common ways to develop a map. I mean, those people are wrong. In fact, this kind of map have a lot of problems. Okay, in some circumstances it might be tricky, but in reality it's a Mercator projection that bad. As a lot of questions on the internet, my answer to this is... It depends. Well, it depends on what? What is the real problem of Mercator? First, let's talk about when this projection was born and what was the purpose for its creation. It is the year of 1569. Europe is discovering land every year and different powers have a need to project the different lands and territories on the map. Looking to old maps, we can see the inconsistencies presented in every single one of them, but there was no defined projection, at least until Gerard's Mercator, a Flemish geographer and cartographer, came with the idea of a cylindric representation of the Earth, as you can see in this picture I'm showing to you. Well, actually this is one of the few versions of the supposed history of this. Some say the Chinese had been representing land with this kind of projection centuries before Mercator was even born. And there are also stories of Germans and Portuguese geographers representing land like this. Which of the theories is true, I can tell you for sure. But one thing I can tell you. This projection was a success for the power nation needs. This allows us to explore the second point I talk about. What was the purpose of Mercator projection? After its creation it became the standard projection for navigation. The unique characteristics of this projection allow navigators to create and identify direct routes to its destinations. It is known that the straight line in the map with the Mercator projection isn't exactly the shortest route between two points. As an example to show you this, try to do a straight line between Italy and Venezuela using a map. Ok, you're struggling to do it without touching Spain or Morocco, in the Gibraltar Strait, right? Ok, and I'll do it on a globe. Yes, you can do it successfully. Little inconsistencies like this might suggest to you that this projection is probably bad in comparison with others. So what other projections exist? And what do some people recommend or try to defend when claiming what the best map projection is? Let's see for example the Molvid projection. It actually tries to fight some of the problems of Mercator. But for navigation it is not ideal as this last one. Simply because it's harder to create routes. Then you have the Galpeters projection, which a lot of people have been defending as well. Why? Simply because the size of country is correct in every single latitude, even if the shape is completely distorted. This map projection has been implemented in several places, and some argue that this is the ideal one simply because the Mercator only benefits the most powerful countries. That does it. As a school director in Boston said, unconsciously we might equate size with importance. Despite this, in my opinion, that's not a reason to widespread the use of the Gulf Peters projection, because it's too hard to learn from it. And no, I'm not from a big known country whose interests might have changed my mind in this case. If you don't know where I'm from, try to guess it in the comment section. So, do you know how to represent Earth almost 100% correctly in shape and size? Yes, the globe. Why should we start to identify places, countries or cities in a map and not using a globe. The various criteria provided for each projection are resolved when using the globe. So why aren't people using it more? The answer is simple. Globes are expensive to buy, take way more effort to create and occupy way more space than maps. Also, if you want to draw in a globe, it's way harder than to do it on a map. Even the creation of softwares using globes are way harder to do in comparison with simple map projections. But should this be a barrier for the use of globes? In my perspective, no. Here's why. Using a globe should be a standard thing in every school. I think children will benefit and learn more efficiently while using a globe. Even better, why not explain to children why it's wrong when using a map and then using the globe? I think interactive classes like this will benefit a lot the comprehension of geography and basic cartography for a lot of people. Alright, alright, we're getting to the end of the video, 
so I just want to tell people there isn't a perfect map. So stop trying to say some are awful and that others are better. Every map has its purpose and if you have a chance to explore, learn and teach while losing a globe. In conclusion, no, the Mercator projection isn't that bad, but it's also way far from being perfect. That's all Geographers of the World, thanks for watching us again, don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram. Also leave a like because all your support is very important. See you in the next stop Geographers of the World.